This is the Big Boy TSR250, an inexpensive motorcycle which is fairly light on fuel, extremely nimble, and even capable of tackling its fair share of dirt roads. But this bike has come with a boatload of challenges, and it's time I spoke to you all about these bikes and what you can expect from them. So why did I buy a big boy? As some of you may know, my Suzuki Bandit has been hospitalized and I knew that the repairs would take a fair chunk of time. And so rather than sitting for months without a motorbike, being stuck to commuting in a cage, I decided to buy a cheap crap bike just so that I could stay on the twos. But I didn't want to use motorbike because I was afraid I'd be stuck with a bike that was previously used and abused. And this placed me in a really, really narrow market. And with my tight budget, my choice for a new bike was pretty much narrowed down to one. Big Boy Motorcycles. So what's good about Big Boy? Well, their bikes are cheap. And that's why the 6060 MC all ride around on them. And because they're so popular, I don't have to worry about them pulling out of the country like other motorcycle brands have done. Now the fuel economy is average, but at 4.6 liters per 100 kilometers, which is about 21-ish kilometers per liter, um, it's better than the Bandit or the Cage. So I'm happy with that. Additionally, the parts are inexpensive too. It really does take a ton of stress off when one can afford to take the bike for its regular services without needing to chip into savings or go into credit in order to pay the bill. But that's just about where the pros become problems. You see, cheap parts are low quality. They wear quickly and fail frequently. And cheap services mean that you're going to deal with poor workmanship. And that leads to more parts which fail prematurely, which can even cause catastrophic damage. Ask me how I know. See, the first failure I had on this bike was actually that the clutch adjustment system was loose. So within like the first 50 kilometers on the clock, I had problems trying to pull away from stop streets if I had the handlebars turned. Luckily, it was an easy fix. So I was able to sort it out on the side of the road using the toolkit provided with the bike. The next failure was when the chain jumped off the back sprocket and got stuck around the front sprocket causing substantial damage to the engine guards. Luckily it didn't end up punching a hole in the block because that would have sucked. It was close to the chain adjustment interval though when it happened. I'd even said to myself in the morning when I get home today I need to do that adjustment will be at the interval. So I kind of wrote the incident off. But it happened a second time. Also just before the adjustment interval and again I'd said to myself in the morning when I get home it'll be time you need to change it. So yeah new rule of thumb when you own a big boy motorcycle if you think you should maintain it you better well should. Just after having the rear tire replaced after some incredibly low mileage too I must add I had a blowout on the highway. I had to push the bike 800 meters off the highway to the closest garage to a safe place where I could work and took off the tire. And the only way that I could explain the damage that I could see where there was a line of punctures in a spiral around the tube is if it had been twisted when it was installed. Then just before toy run last year I discovered one of the spokes had broken off. So I sent the bike to big boy for a replacement spoke but it turns out that nobody imports these spokes into the country. So what they did was installed a different spoke, a thinner spoke than what is stock and they installed it correctly. They wrapped it around another spoke, bending it and hooking it into the hub, which is just absolutely insane. On top of that, I had to wait two days longer than we'd agreed on to get the bike. And I was worried I would end up missing Toy Run. Now the TSR250 uses sprocket bolts to connect the rear sprocket to the back wheel. And in December of last year, about a week after I'd gotten the bike back from service, they failed. Bad. I was pulling away from Stop Street, close to home, thank goodness. And um, sprocket was just spinning, but the back wheel wasn't moving anyway. So I had to push the bike home and I started inspecting the damage. All of this damage was caused to the back wheel. With all this damage to the back wheel, I figured it was not safe to use and I contacted the same dealer where I bought the bike from and paid for a new back wheel. It arrived on a Friday and of course I'd already booked the whole of Saturday morning. So eventually late in the afternoon on Saturday, I started working to change the back wheel. Pulled off the old tire by hand, which is not an easy task, but I then struggled to fit the tire onto the new rim. So rather than like getting worked up and frustrated, I figured 
Sunday morning, I'll go buy some tire levers and just do it with the right tools, nice and easy. The Sunday afternoon, start working on the tire again, this time with the tire levers. I'm using the right tools now. Struggled for about 15 minutes and I'd even struggled so hard that one of the tire levers had slipped. But a small voice inside my head says to me, just put the two rims side by side. So I take the old rim, take the new rim, and you won't believe it. The new rim's an 18 inch, the old rim was a 17 inch. So I phoned the dealer back on the Monday and I said, dude, this uh, rim that you sent me, without asking me what size it is, is um, it's not for my bike, it's bigger. And he says, okay, did you try fitting it? I'm like, yes. Did you use tire levers? Yes. Did you scratch it? Yes. Well, we won't refund it. I'm like, yeah, I understand. It's not cool though, because y'all didn't ask me. But I then ended up having to buy bigger tires for the bike. An additional expense I wasn't looking forward to because they didn't ask me what size rim comes on my bike. They're the dealer. They should know. Early in January, I noticed that these sprocket bolts were failing again. So in order to prevent any further damage to the bike, I just replaced it immediately. And I rode on them for three more weeks. No worries, no issues, nothing. About two weeks ago, I got my bike back from a service and a week later, I noticed, hey, two of these sprocket bolts are broken again. Now the annoying part is that I'd ask the guys when I took the, the bike for a service to check that everything was shan and ah, looking good, everything was sorted, and to specifically check those sprocket bolts and they told me everything was fine. Well, you see these notches on the swing arm? I noticed that these things were actually not lined up. Now, the last people to work on the back wheel of my bike was the dealer and they should have lined it up. They didn't. And because these things are out of alignment, it means that the sprocket is being acted on with a sideways force, which caused it to break. And I've even had the throttle cable snap. Now, I know that throttle cables fail, but I know that this thing failed way too early within like the first 12,000 Ks. And I know that it's gonna fail again because the adjuster screw goes as far out as it possibly can, but there's still all of this free play on the throttle. And we know that when metals flex, it's going to fail. Now, I'm not saying that Big Boy is entirely responsible for some of the failures with this bike because I do ride hard. But the fact that all these failures seem to happen shortly after the bike has come back from the shop really makes it look bad for the quality of service at the dealership. It's a pity that I've had such a bad experience with this bike because a cheap bike is actually a really great entry point into getting into motorcycles, especially if people can't afford the Japanese or European bikes. But with frequent failures like this, it's highly likely going to suck the enjoyment out of motorbikes when you spend more time trying to fix the thing than riding it. So, should you buy a big boy? Well, honestly, I don't know. See, I knew I would have quality issues when I bought the bike. And I knew that I might find a better deal on a used bike, but it would be hit and miss in terms of whether it's been used or abused. I still have plenty of fun riding the big boy and I'm not afraid to push it so I can work at improving my skills. I mean, replacement levers cost like 10% of the bandit levers. So I'm not afraid to lose traction on the bike and damage the levers when I'm busy learning new riding techniques because they're cheaper to replace. So if you're looking for a cheap bike to learn on or to abuse and you're willing to void the warranty so you can just do the maintenance yourself and ensure better workmanship, then sure, Big Boy is probably a good choice of bike. But if you want a reliable motorbike with good dealership support, then stay far away. These bikes are under spec have low build quality and even a ton of things I needed to adjust when I bought the bike before I could go for my first ride. So yeah, that's my opinion on big boy motorcycles. Uh, would I buy another one? No. Am I gonna keep servicing it at big boy? No. My warranty ends now, like there's no point. So I'm gonna keep working on the big boy myself. And yes, I gotta give up time to do it, but whatever. I wanna say thank you for watching this vid. People don't like videos that 
negatively talk about brands so if you want to support this channel please go and buy a casual riders logo tee you can use the discount code casual riders 75 to get 75 rand off of your order first 20 people get the discount like this video subscribe so that it can spread to more people uh 95 of the people watching my videos aren't subscribed so if you like my stuff hit that subscribe button so youtube can recommend it to more people i hope you guys enjoyed this video apparently this is a thing that youtubers are doing so yeah i'm holding a lapel mic go figure uh i hope you enjoyed it take it easy life is gonna throw a ton at you but whatever it does don't look down look ahead and until next time Ride safe.